we'll start recording now. So welcome Rimco. Why don't you give me a brief introduction of who you work for and what your job is in Dare and Utrecht. Hi, good day. Uh, my name is Rimko van der Pan. Uh, I'm a project leader for uh, sustainable transport and specifically uh, charging infrastructure for cars, trucks, and heavy duty uh, heavy duty building uh, vehicles. Um, Utrecht is a city of little over 350,000 inhabitants, and we're growing to about uh, 500,000 in the coming years. Uh, we, we're the quickest growing city in the in the in the country, with a far left uh, uh, political wing. So that helps us, and I'm responsible in this position for the last four years. And in that, uh, can you tell us about uh, the how many EVs are there in the city? Or what percentage Very good. Are. Well, I have a forecast, and I guess we're now around 15, 1, 5 percent. And for 2025, we got a forecast of 19, 1, 9 percent. In 2030, our forecast uh, uh, is for 40 percent of all uh, cars uh, to be electric. So, what year was that for the 40 percent? Uh, in 2030, so in uh, four, five and a half years. So and um, so, when did you first put start putting public charging in? Uh, so that was uh, quite a while ago, one and a half decades ago. In 2008, we started the first, uh, um, yeah, public charger. Um, there, there wasn't anything. We didn't know how to how it works. It was free to charge. There was no passes. You could just connect uh, some cars that weren't really cars. Um, and my colleagues who were in position then just started trying to figure out, hey, how, how is this going to work? And since then, now we got a little over 2,000 uh, public charges with two uh, charging spots uh, on each side. Okay, and are they, they are based on the street or in car parks? Uh, well, both. Uh, so I'm responsible for the public space. Um, uh, and we got, of course, just like in Melbourne or in Sydney or in uh, or Darwin, there's, of course, suburbs where most people have their own uh, parking space. They are responsible for their own charger. Um, for grid capacity, it would be nice to know how to deal and how to manage it. But it's private property, so we cannot steer that. Uh, it does give us some headaches. Um, but I'm only responsible for the public and semi-public uh, place, so uh, street charters. And we also, as a city, we have about 10 parking garages with a few thousand parking spots. And, well, in total, I guess we got about 100 chargers in those parking garages. Um, and now we're bel building about 200 a year for the coming few years extra in those parking garages, 200 chargers. So the other, out of the 2,000, the others are street based, are they? Yeah. Yeah. And so they're designated just for EV charging the parking spots there? Correct. And... Um, so do you have a kind of a ratio for the number of parking spots you need or charges you need for the number of cars? Do you have a figure in mind? Yeah, that, that, that's the right way of saying it. Uh, figure in mind, uh, bear in mind that every district or every part of the city has its own demographics. So. Uh, some areas, very expensive houses, only street parking or very expensive houses, private parking, but also uh, small houses uh, with a lot of electricians and uh, plumbers and yeah, people who need vans, which need to be electric due to zero emission zones. Um, so it, 
every part of the city is very different, but as a general, now I'm working in a, a part of the city um, with very expensive houses, only on street parking. And we're at 16, 16% of all parking spots uh, electric at the moment. And people are still complaining that it's, they need to look for a free par uh, charging spot. So, but there's also areas where we're under 2% and people are uh, complaining that there's too much. Okay. So, yeah, so obviously it's, it's not one size fits all. No, it's a, it's a thin line and we're constantly, every month, we're looking in, uh, in the data, in the occupancy rates of, in the sub, well, not sure what the English term is, but we got districts, smaller districts and the miniature districts and in every miniature district, which is about three hectares, we're looking at the occupancy rates and then we decide, hey, this is above service level, so we need to add extra chargers. Or, hey, it's okay, we don't need to do anything here okay. this month. So you have a grid map and you've worked it out for it through a grid, yeah. Yep. Okay, so um, can you tell me who who pays for the installation and maintenance of the charges? So that's the CPO, the uh, charge point operator. We as a city aren't the best uh, when it comes to infrastructure or technical or IT stuff, uh, especially when it comes to personnel. So what we did was we thought the city knows and me and my colleagues know the city through and through and what goes where and how, but the installation the, uh, and all that and the management of uh, charging stations, that is totally not our cup of tea. So we decide uh, what the tariff is, so what the charge point operator may charge. So that's 36 cents at the moment, uh, euro cents per kilowatt. Um, and on average, it's about 22 kilowatts per session at the moment. And we get a few cents for every charge kilowatt. So it's the CPO who invests about two and a half thousand upfront. And he's got a license to operate for 10 years and it's his, uh, his or her uh, ris uh, risk, whether it, uh, it pays off or not in the long term. And do they bid for those? Is there more than one CPO? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, every three years, we set a new tender in the market. And at the moment, uh, we got six CPOs. Um, so there's uh, three uh, different models. So there's the parking garage CPO. So they have the wall boxes, which you install on, on the walls. We have the fast charges, which we place on uh, sporting facilities uh, uh, and shopping malls. So those are uh, a bit bigger, uh, five zero kilowatts uh, charging at the minimum. Uh, those are two operators and there's three operators uh, in timeline, uh, so some are older, some just started uh, for standard street chargers um, for 11 kilowatts. Okay, and so you you set the price that the consumers pay? Is, yeah. That's right. And then the, they then bid to be able to provide that and make a profit well, we set the maximum price and uh, they go, uh, they offer it a little bit under and also with uh, various discount models. I'm not sure about the grid capacity in, uh, in your city, but in our city, uh, we haven't got enough grid. So we also are working on to switch off the charges at peak times when everybody takes a shower, goes, uh, needs it for heating or goes cooking. So we, we got a few grid uh, problems and we also use, uh, we also want to pay the, uh, the electric car drivers for providing electricity from their car to the grid in peaks um, when the grid doesn't, uh, when the normal uh, windmills and sun and uh, coal mines, coal 
and gas uh, doesn't provide enough. Okay, so, and 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 is it are they actually putting power back into the grid now? Uh, some are. Yeah, so we have a closed system uh, where we cooperate with a few manufacturers, such as Renault, but also Kia. Uh, and we're testing that and we're working on that. And there's a few cars charging back in the grid as we speak. That's terrific. So what percentage would that be? What proportion charging back into the grid? Well, no, it's nothing. <laughs> no, it's hardly anything. It's, uh, it's just a few. Um, uh, later this year, we will add, and it's pretty cool actually, uh, 500 Renault 5s uh, with vehicle uh, to grid chargers uh, in a closed uh, car sharing operation in, in Utrecht. So that's going to make a huge difference. And I'm preparing a world record for next year, late next year, to, uh, to switch off the grid uh, completely and power. Uh, at the downtime, at the downest of the downtime, uh, the lowest uh, hour uh, to provide the uh, electricity from electric cars uh, without any other provider. That's fantastic. Okay. But that's, um, it's a long shot, but we're trying if we can make it, that work. Well, it's, a, it's what they call a moon shot, isn't it? A long shot, a moon <laughs> shot. Now, in one of the questions, I asked you if there was any unintended consequences and you said that there needed to be more stakeholder management and more civil servants so what's the story behind that all right yeah well there's two things playing um regarding this as stakeholder management as a city uh, we're balancing on a thin line some people say i drive my uh, uh, 9080 toyota corolla and i will use it for the coming 30 years because i use it wisely uh, and it runs on diesel or petrol or whatever uh, what are you do doing but uh, putting in zero emission zones and taking uh, taking away my car park uh, i'm very uh, sustainable responsible i use my car for already 40 years and i expect to use it for another 20 years or 30 years um I don't need to drive electric, it's just all that sort of stuff. And on the other hand is, hey, I just got rid of my car, where's my charger? Uh, I got a new lease car, uh, everybody's driving Teslas here, I want to drive it as well, but there's no charging stations. Uh, and on one hand, it's also about, at least in our city, in some way, people with higher education or higher income know how to work the official government can channels pretty well and they know how to complain at the right persons which kick me in the back uh, every now and then but i yeah I, I work on service level and occupancy rates and not everybody likes that as much so i, I work data driven and when i see that charges in the area aren't used as often i will not will not provide total at the moment who provides normal charges at the street I will not add extra um, but yeah there's a lot of complaints and when we take when we put in a charger we also put in signs with two arrows you may only park here while you're uh, charging or decharging so you may not park there with a petrol or a diesel but you can't even park there with an electric car when it's not plugged in you need to be plugged in and do you find people who charge there when they shouldn't is there a penalty no there's no penalty so it's just an honor system is it yeah yeah but we also expect to have a lot of uh, vehicle to grid chargers and uh, uh, well all of our chargers are vehicle to grid um, and we expect for the new load of cars to be vehicle to grid ready as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm working with a lot of uh, um, yeah universities etc. Uh, and research centers uh, and car manufacturers to make that work. Uh, so, but uh, people when they complain, the, there's official channels when they complain, and I go to court about three four years, three or four times per year. I have 
but there's three levels of complaints. So the first complaint I got about uh, five per day in my team. So there's two FTE constantly working on complaints. Then I go to the uh, low court and uh, that works about every two weeks. Then I have to uh, tell what, uh, with the lawyers, etc. cetera. Uh, and there's a higher court, I'm not sure what the English word is, that's about three or four times a year where people aren't happy with that, that I take away their uh, parking spaces. Because we do install the chargers, but we do not provide extra parking spaces. So, and, and so that, you get two sorts of complaints, the people who are losing the parking and also the people who think there's not enough charging. Do they take correct. the court as well? No, the, no. So it's a different, yeah, okay. Well, that people, and that costs a little over 100,000 euro uh, a year. Just for the court? No, no just for, uh, for dealing with the complaint, the complete process. Okay. Okay, that's very interesting, Rick. I'm sure our people will be interested in that. That will get them very... Well, the thing is, we started in 2008 when there weren't really electric cars and we just put it in place. Now now we're around 15%, so a little over 1 in 10 cars is already electric. So now it's pretty okay, but the last few years they were pretty heavy and intense. And uh, we needed a lot of political uh, will and straight backs of politicians uh, uh, backing me up. Because, yeah, it's easy to say it, to, to get in the paper with all the naysayers. Uh, and, yeah, well, we were in the newspapers about every week uh, for the last few years. And now it's getting a bit better that they see our, the cheaper cars are coming, the fans are coming, the plumbers are working with it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Well, Remco, that's about all that I need. That's very interesting. Um, would you we didn't touch uh, a, a pretty important topic. Yeah. Uh, and that is uh, grid capacity. All right, yes. Um, so we're turning down the 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 charges at peak hours, so everybody can still cook, uh, hospitals work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the private chargers and the domestic, we cannot deal with it. Uh, and usually, when a lease driver in the Netherlands uh, throughout the city, throughout the Netherlands, but also in our city, comes home after a day of work at around 5:45, he plugs in his Tesla or another electric car, and he starts charging at peak, peak, peak. But he's also going to cook then, then he's going to shower, uh, he's going to heat his house. So that bit uh, is concerning us at the moment. And that is going to be a huge problem. Okay, the growing problem. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's good. Well, we'll watch for that too. Because we have the irony here that um, they're trying to do a price signal that it will be cheaper to charge your car during the day mm -hmm. when we have more solar in the system. And oh, that's important. That's yeah. a very good thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we'll have to deal with those grid issues as well. Yeah. So, so Remco, I really appreciate your time and thanks so yeah. much. And have a great day. Could you send me a couple of photos of um, your street charging infrastructure what it looks like yeah sure or any, any is it okay if i just um send you some google maps street view links so that you can also see hey if i move a bit it's it looks like this and this so you have a bit more context than just okay. a picture that will be good yeah, yeah that'd be good that's all right great. okay well thanks thanks for helping out an aussie and um We'll be having a meeting in a couple of weeks where we've got all these, a live meeting, but we're going to drop in a couple of interviews um, and yours will be one of them. Awesome. Have a great okay. day. Thank you very much. Always happy to help. Bye. Bye.